Well, over this weekend, we've got a fair few interviews. We've uh, heard also from John Shimon, uh, DED, but, uh, and that was on the Sefton. We have the Chief Minister with us, and I think we'll do the Sefton as well. Um, you think it's running out of steam now, this item? Do you think it's kind of well, going the, off the... The argument has been very well uh, uh, put on all sides, I think. Uh, everybody's position, position is very clear. Uh, the decision has been taken. Um, yes, there will be a political questioning and comment, I'm sure, but I think it's time to move on. OK, but I, I can't quite let it go because, I mean, there's still these things about um, Alf Cannon, for instance. I mean, he's, he's gunning, isn't he, for it? He wants a scalp. Well, we would have to question what Mr Cannon wants out of all, all this. He has argued that if the uh, rescue or the restructuring package, which has been agreed with the Sefton, uh, doesn't work, uh, then there should be ministerial resignations. But equally, he has argued there should be ministerial resignations because the restructuring package was put together in the first place. And it's very difficult to uh, follow the consistency of the argument that's been put forward. It's time we moved on from this uh, type of, of debate, frankly. We've got to recognise uh, the uh, fragility of the local domestic economy and recognise also that what we've taken, the actions which have been carried out, have been entirely driven by the need to stabilise and maintain confidence in that local economy. What do you think to Sir Miles Walker saying that they didn't actually need that money that particular time? And it, well, you know, Mr Walker has uh, a position, of course, as chairman of the company to try and maintain confidence in the, the Sefton Group. And I'm sure, uh, notwithstanding the uh, very different arguments which were put uh, to government uh, outside of that, uh, he is doing the right thing to stabilise confidence in that company. Was it um, a sale or a leaseback on an interest, a secured interest-free loan for this Middlemarch area? It's both. It's both. It's a sale and leaseback. Uh, it was to provide liquidity for the company to continue to uh, maintain its uh, operation. And it gives government a chance, if uh, the company decides not to buy the land back again in the future, uh, to consolidate that site into the broader uh, area that government owns in the whole of central Douglas. Um, it's a very simple, very straightforward uh, operation and there's nothing secret or, or underhand about it. I mean, and I mentioned John Shimon, we've got these graphics we got hold of, of a CAD computer generated item showing what might go on Middlemarch. This is the yeah. Sefton's idea, yeah. maybe what 09 we think it, it might have been there. Yeah. Is that still what this is all about? This is what you want? It well, Middlemarch uh, or the Sefton Group have been looking at that site now for a number of years as a replacement uh, location for a new hotel uh, f following the ultimate closure of the palace. That's been no secret. It's been in, in the public domain for quite some time. They have put a number of proposals together, some very exciting and interesting proposals. Well, this looks great. I mean, the pictures of it look fantastic, uh, but, you know. But uh, I think uh, whatever happens, we're some years away from, from that, if, in fact, we ever will achieve it. Uh, and again, as I've said before, the wider argument uh, has to be considered that, that uh, first of all, government is putting together a master plan for the whole of that central site. And we would need as part of that to consider whether, in fact, Middlemarch is the best site for a new hotel. Okay. Uh, and finally, which I, again, I put to Mr Shimon, do you think you did handle this correctly? Are you happy with the way it all happened? Yes, uh, I think government did uh, everything it possibly could uh, to... Um, uh, recognised the problems facing one of our major employers. It took positive steps to try and stabilise that company, to work with the company and its, its other financial backers to protect 300 jobs and protect confidence in the economy. If, and I repeat again, if we hadn't done that and the worst scenario had come about and the company was forced to close for whatever reason, we would be equally criticised for not having taken action at the appropriate moment to try and protect those jobs. So from our point of view, we, we were in an absolute no-win situation. But I would just once again point uh, everybody's uh, focus now on the wider debate which is going on round about the Isle of Man about the future of, of small states, uh, small financial service centres such as the Isle of Man uh, with G G8 coming up and uh, the newspapers only this week have been full of attacks and comments about the future of, of these countries. We have to do our best at the moment to protect confidence and that's what we're doing. Okay, well, we can talk about that in our next section.